couple summers ago, I made a number of boards for a farmer's market. And in doing so, I had a bunch of offcuts that I saved. In this video, I'm going to be using all those offcuts to make a new board. This will be a little bit of a memento for myself. The whole process is just gluing up random pieces here and there, clamping them up, taping them up, and applying weights, whatever I can do to get them connected to each other. I figured a few of you might want to see how I open up my shop. This is how I open up the doors and this is me taking out the little dowel and opening up the uh, overhang door. To completely set up my shop it takes about five minutes so it's really not too bad. But I do have to do this every single time so it's about five minutes set up and maybe ten minutes breakdown because of cleaning. It's really not too bad. One of the downsides is that my table saw is set onto unlevel ground, so every single time I have to shim it up. And with everything set up now, I can start cutting pieces to size. The overall goal here is for these pieces to have the same height, and so it's going to take a bunch of random cuts and random glue ups to get them into shapes that'll work. The wood being used here is really just about everything you can imagine for a cutting board. I have a little bit of cherry, some maple, some purple heart, uh, zebra wood, uh, walnut. This whole step was mainly done using just my table saw and the fence on it, and then also my crosscut sled. kind of see in the upper corner there all the strips that I eventually came out to. Most of them required multiple glue ups and shaping to get down to the final strip that would be used for the board. And with everything cut up, I can start to assemble it and put it in a pattern that I find visually pleasing. And then 
bring it inside and start the glue up process. And here I'm using a piece of chalk to mark it out so that I can remember the exact orientation and pieces don't go side to side or get out of place. Now I tend to apply a liberal amount of glue. I've seen some guys here on YouTube that just use a little bit just to cover the surface, but I tend to want all that squeeze out just to make sure that I'm getting every part of the surface glued up. Now I can just put everything into some bar clamps and easy old clamps and let the glue dry up. After the glue is set up, I can take it back out to my crosscut sled and then cut a 90 degree angle on here. And remove that sled and then now I'll just use the actual table saw fence. And I'm going to cut a few strips in here to get a little bit more of a random pattern. I'd given some thought to doing 45 degree cuts, but in the end I decided against it. I really do like the whole 90 degree angle that's going on here. Now I can flip these every other, and this will kind of break up the pattern just a little bit more, a little bit more chaos. Now it's time for the final glue up. I can take it back inside, apply another liberal layer of glue, and put it together. Cutting a piece of oak up to become a sacrificial backer piece for the cutting board and this way it'll prevent any sort of tear out or chip out in the planer. To attach it to the board I'm just going to use some Starbond adhesive and accelerator and you can find a link to this stuff in my description. I think I ran about 20 passes through this planer. I uh, took it nice and slow, did not want to take off too much material in one pass. back over to the table saw, put a 90 degree cut on that, and then clean up all the edges. The last step for cutting here is to put a chamfered edge on the bottom, so I turn my blade to 45 degrees and I run it through all sides. Now it's time to apply some 80 grit sandpaper. And right after that I run a damp towel over it. And this sort of raises the grains up so that when you use a higher grit sandpaper, and in my case I'm using 220 grit, it really knocks everything down and you get a silky smooth finish.
And now it's time for my favorite part. Applying a little bit of mineral oil to soak into the grain. And this thing really soaked it up. After I have allowed a little time to set up, I can go over it with some homemade conditioning oil. And this is just some beeswax, mineral oil, and coconut oil. The final step is to apply some little rubber feet. So I'm going to use my drill and drill some shallow holes and screw those guys in. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you'd like to see more of my content, go over and check out my Instagram page. I have a link in my description. I'm much more active over there. Uh, other than that, I hope you guys are doing well, and I'll see you in the next one.